Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming to my uh, painting the, this little mummy hummingbird sitting on her nest. Um, during the video I will, you know, you will, uh, I will explain the inspiration for this and uh, we are quite happy. She seems to be a happy mummy and so I will tell you what I put extra on after I left um, finishing the painting. The whole painting was done except I did a little bit so what I did is I just take a wet um, oh this is very wet <laughs> not that wet um, uh, kind of some kind of uh, wet uh, uh, brush my uh, happy dot and I just go pull the color out and that's why I did you know and you know kind of slightly faintly suggest that more leaf because I don't want um, the background to take over the intensity of the bird and so that's what I did and then of course I just kind of feel like if they need a little bit color I just kind of drop a little bit color there now and this is the part that I added because I wanted further enhance the shape and the form of the nest so what I did is I put some of that green mix <laughs> the green mix that will seep here and I kind of do this shape coming down here okay so it makes this look a little a lot better right and then I add a little bit more paint spray over here and I added this line because I want I kind of wanted this to mix with the background but it was too vague that there was no line so this is the lost line and this is the fine line so I added a little stroke of line with my zero brush you know just a very quick and so that looks a little bit better for me and that's it and so um, of all the color that I use um, I, I talk about that of course throughout the video if you want to just kind of watch it first before you start and um, I think that's beneficial and it also will be on my blog post and and you look for the drawing there don't look for the drawing here on YouTube I'm not good enough to put a drawing, a line drawing on YouTube, so I just put it on sunsetpeony.com, sunsetpeonies.com. You can find that on the description and uh, the, the the spelling and the names, and um, and then I will have a drawing there for you. Okay, so don't stress out if you so need it. If you don't, of course, you know, and um, and so uh, this is really fun. I use my artist um, uh, my artist license to kind of changes this uh, the color of the bird so that it is not as busy and I really like that and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign this um, with my micron I sign my painting and uh, I will um, I think there's not much to really talk about the color is like um, very you know it's very available and like I say soon I will uh, somebody wanted to ask me what can I find for if I don't have quinacodon violet, right? And uh, I'm going to do a, you know, kind of like a comparison, a dupe. Um, some uh, a company just uh, talked to me and asked me, and so I might get a palette from them and, you know, see if their color, you know, is a good match, you know, and then we will, you know, go from there, okay? Because sometimes you guys don't want to buy these uh, commercial, commercial. A watercolor that I have, you know, I Winston Newton sepia. Uh, this is M Graham. Uh, I didn't use ultramarine pink, sorry. Dioxidine purple from the Black House brand. Uh, house brand, I like that. I like it. it. It works, you know, and nothing to complain about. Okay, and um, so uh, yeah, have fun. Okay, you guys should uh, have fun in doing this, and we talk and uh, subscribe to me. Um, don't uh, just keep. Um, uh, do as much as you can in the summer to keep your skill going or else you know you might have to pick up if you come back in the fall to start again and so uh, do keep your um, you know keep your brush wet still you know so that you will be sharp you know and uh, the your your skill will build upon what you have you know so don't what I mean is don't leave the you know, uh, painting or practicing watercolor for a long time during the summer. I know that there's a lot of fun. I'm going to, you know, keep going having fun too. So just like you guys, okay? And so I'll stop talking and uh, let you go. And I'll see you in the painting. Okay, let's try to get started. The sunlight is really good. However, I'm sitting next to the window and <laughs> I'm feeling the heat from the sunlight. This is July, right? And so in Utah, we have all past the danger of um, of uh, 
of the flood and so that is really nice okay so you know my float brush the trusty little um, happy dots and uh, you know just use some kind of synthetic brush if you have but um you know the detail brush is important and so uh, we need to get started and I, I kind of take out this old brush I don't think it's totally synthetic but it has like some dry you know I mean it's kind of stiffer and so we will use it for the for the um, for the nest right and so um, and today we are gonna use this the dioxazine purple that's a main one for one of the wings and of course I'm going to use a sap green for her but we're gonna use some purple uh, pink gray is important but you know I, I guess that you guys um you guys always uh, uh, so let's use this um, kind of number two right I I you know just any synthetic brush you know about the size of number two okay so what I'm going to start with is the is I'm going to go into the pink gray because the pink gray is a little bit of a blue okay so let's just do her beak first and of course this um, uh, a drawing of this for your convenience and use will be at my <clears throat> blog sunsetpeony.com and uh, you can go and uh, look for the line drawing at this blog post okay but don't look for it in YouTube here because you won't be able to find it I'm just not good enough to uh, you know somehow um, have a drawing ready here for you to use I it's easier for me to do it on the block okay and so I'm going back to get some more you know um, you know I give you guys um, clues like this you know I'm doing this I'm doing that but you know maybe you're better at picking up a lot of pigment your first try so you don't need to or maybe you are a little bit more timid about picking up pigment and so you you know now it's a clean brush okay I'm just kind of smoothing out you know diluting there is a line right there because it is the beak of a of a bird and so it needs to be a little bit uh, strict okay <clears throat> not a little bit it needs to be strict you know and so what I'm dropping in I'm dropping actually I'm dropping in a little bit of the dioxazine purple dioxazine purple is a blue purple okay now not very far distant from now I'm going to um, <clears throat> Because most of my paints, I'll show you, they are, you know, I go over, like I, I go to, this is uh, Winston Newton, I go to, um, then, uh, no, uh, Blake's Art Supply and get it, and this is uh, their house brand, and I really like that too, but we're gonna <laughs> find dupes, uh, duplicate, you know, um, that we can use uh, for, you know, if you guys uh, just want to get one palette, okay, we're gonna you know try different palette and see if we can you know find things like that okay now we um you know this is uh, still a little bit wet like i say in utah it's not wet anymore right i can touch it but wherever you are if you live in a more humid area like asia and then you know i can actually straightway work on this but if you d don't live in a in a um, in a place that drive things dry easy so at this point you might want to pick out some black paint you know if you see me you've been painting with me for a while you 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 realize that I always had a what I do with an eye is I use um micron okay because when micron is dry it's kind of stay put but the um, the color of the micron itself is kind of sepia and it's not intense enough so I always go back in with black the reason why I do this instead of this part is because I'm thinking about you guys and how you might have to um you know let that area have a little bit so i'm dotting the outside okay and then uh, i will you know do a little bit of the same color with the black color you know i don't mind using black color for the eye because um you are um uh because it's you know really the focal point you know you kind of you don't want it to see the eye of course we see the whole painting as our focal point seriously but you know the eye area you can be a little more detailed okay so after this uh, after the uh, micron I usually come in here and just you know enhance that a little bit and let it dry the reason why I use the micron is I'm kind of picky I don't like things to move when I'm doing my watercolor okay so we're gonna give that a little bit more time let's go to the tail okay because uh, we're using black so we you can use use black ink like Indian black ink or you can use just any black color that you have on your palette 
and we're gonna do this this uh, part of the tail feather okay and uh, so I'm going to you know this is more very much a Chinese style that's how we you know the Chinese oriental art uh, plain thing that's how we do that we just go in and just paint the feather with strokes okay and so now this stroke need to go down this way a little bit okay just to make it correct okay and so now I'm cleaning the brush so there's no more pigment on there and I'll pull this what's the pigment left from there and down a little bit like this okay I find that when I was practicing that uh, render the shape of this part uh, correctly and so you can do that and if you think that oh it's too dark you can always like take a lot a little bit of burnt umber and just kind of chop a little bit in there so that the dark black is not just black you can see different color on it I actually um, hear that from uh, from uh, um, uh, what do you call that the the people that go out and paint uh, life and uh, urban uh, urban what is, what are they called? <laughs> you know, just a minute it will come back to me. The you know urban painter they go out and do that, and one of the you know more seasoned artists uh, he he say, hey, if you you know accuse black or gray as too you know uh, as too um, a dull, then you add some color on it, right? I I add some purple on it, and suddenly it come to life. I add some brown on it, and suddenly that also come to life. Okay, so don't. Um, you know my humble opinion don't worry about it okay now we're gonna come to this very important part and I'm going to um, talk to you guys about the decision of why I make okay so this brush is damp but not uh, totally wet okay so I'm I'm just you know you see that there's no pigment I'm just putting that on the on the paper and here I am coming in to drop in the pigment and so I want purple over here okay so because I have wet that area so the color kind of wanted to disperse a little bit okay and this is the only part and then I'm going to go into some phalo blue okay so this is you know people wanted me to there's some phalo blue here and I, what I do is I just pick up the pigment like that I really encourage you guys to um, okay just like that okay just those two color on there just to bring out the characteristic of hummingbird right and then I soften the edge right there, okay, a little bit. And then now I'm going to, uh, I say maybe I want a little bit because um, when there's water over here, um, this will dry a little bit lighter. So I want it a little bit more intense, but it's not necessary. Now, this is very, very important to let this part dry, okay? We don't touch it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down over this area over here, okay? This area over here. And uh, put some flashy color. Now, how do I do flashy color? I use burnt umber. You know, you should have a burnt umber. Burnt umber is like kind of like a. Okay, um, I I know that you guys have seen all of my stuff, so I'm not wor worried about showing you this uh, ugly palette. Okay, this is a burnt orange, but burnt umber is a little bit uh, brownish orange. Okay, and then I put it. Um, I use some pink or red color next to, uh, that I have in my palette that's next to it. Okay, so I make myself kind of like a flashy color, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it over here, but in a very, very light-handed, okay? Now, I say light-handed, and you say, well, Kathy, I can see all the color. You'll see what I do, okay? I'm, I'm trying to be light-handed. And you see why, okay, in a minute, why I want it light-handed. Because I'm going to put green over it. Or not over it, it's actually... And so now I have a clean brush and I'm going to come here and I soften it. Okay, soften the side, pull the color out. You know, it's an abstract shape over here, okay? And then this area, I'm actually going to leave it. Now, uh, when I was practicing, I actually did a very colorful hummingbird. And I find that it was very, very busy. And I just didn't like it. So I'm going to do a green one. It's going to be green color all the way over here. Like, see, this is, you know, almost dry, but not quite. Actually, it's dry enough, okay? Maybe I'll just do that. Now, wait until this part is dry, okay? And then I'm going to do a green bird with uh, purple and and, and uh, pink gray over there, okay? And you will see. And so now I'm going to do somewhat of an intense color coming down over here, okay? 
And so get your brush ready, clean it, and dab it dry, okay? So it's always, you know, you swirl your brush into, into a pot of water that you have, and then you kind of dab it dry with a napkin. I actually like to dab it dry with a towel, because it's drier. And then I dip into this sepia pink. You guys like to see me, uh, no, not sepia, sorry, sap green, okay? That's the color I like to paint hummingbird because sap green is my, see, I don't like really, there's no special trick. I just pull the color out. And if it is not intense enough, then I go in and get more intense color, you know. And uh, we're always like, uh, with doing watercolor, we're always correcting ourselves, okay? Now, so this is the part I'm coming all the way over here, okay? You see that? But it against that black uh, eye area, okay? I'm going all the way over here, all the way covering the eye, okay? And then I do this in segments so that it won't be as hard. Like, you guys won't find it very, very hard to do, okay? And then I'm going to bring it all the way over down here, and then I'm going to soften this area, okay? Now, green, we'll see what happened today, okay? Usually, it will give us... Now, I didn't have enough pigment, as you can see. Okay, I want it kind of intense because that's the main color of the, the hummingbird. Okay, so I come down here and then I keep going, I keep going. Okay, I keep going. And then when it come down towards the very top, then I, you know, you naturally your brush will be running out of paint, right? But that will be perfect. And that's why I start over here. I'm trying um, hard to explain, you know, as we go, right? So you guys can see. Now, this is a clean brush, sorry. I, I, I just need to tell you that. A clean brush, I wash it, I dab it dry, and then I, you can see that I'm pulling the green, right? I'm actually pulling the green into the blue and the purple, you know, and you, you guys can see that it works very well. It can, it is totally, you can do that, okay? And just leave uh, ever so slightly a little white spot over there. Because the sun is shining and you want some reflective. Um, and while it's still wet, you can uh, actually take some more uh, sap green, okay? And just try to intensify that. But, you know, this is when you are a little bit more comfortable or you can wait until it's dry before you do that, okay? Now, over here, you know, because I know green is somewhat easy to pull it out. So I have a clean brush now, okay? I'm pulling this on top of the, the fleshy color that I just did. You know, I make uh, some kind of artist decision to not make it too busy because for some reason, because we have the nest down there, if this hummingbird, she's not just standing alone, fluttering her wings, right? And so I'm, I am I felt like, oh, I need it a little bit more intense. So that's what I did. I just pull, put a little bit more pigment on here, okay? Not a lot. And then I'm going to soften this because you know i want the two color to merge together but if this color is uh, wet and you 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 do what i just do then it will become mud but look how clean and um, happy she is <laughs> oh she has to be a she because she's like oh i don't know i really don't know because you know i'm not quite i really should go study it i have hummingbird books about if the father actually help out with sitting with nesting the the hummingbird, okay? I'm adding a little bit of pigment over there, okay? Just to get it a little bit, little bit more intense because this is a very beautiful area of the bird that we wanted to kind of maintain, right? Now, this is almost the hardest part because, you know, and then now it's over. You have already done it. Congratulations, right? Okay, and now, so I might want to leave that a little bit and just put, how about we do the green patch over here? Okay, now before we do that, we also need that. Uh, so now we're going to just do burn sienna, okay? I'm going to put it, now all this line, you will be able to use, you can see that it's kind of, mm, it's kind of light, but I'm going to have it all ready for you, okay? On that line drawing. So in case you, you know, you fluster a little bit, you know, it's good to have the line for beginners. Oh, <laughs> Not just big enough for me, <laughs> everyone, you know, okay, and I just soften this part. I use a clean brush, soften it after the pigment. Why is that? Because I'm preparing this area for the green to come in, okay? And so, while this is still uh, green, I'm going to, uh, while this is still wet, I'm going to do some green over here, okay? Also with some burnt sienna. Because that's just this, uh, this particularly beautiful mommy. That's just her, her beauty, you know, she has, she had all this color. And, uh, you know, seriously, you might think that 
I'm having a lot of color right now, but I'm not. You compare to my practice uh, yesterday and a couple days ago, actually, that was a lot more color, and I'm going to scratch that, okay? I soften that, okay? Use a clean brush, go up to the line and just kind of brush it, okay? That's how you soften that. Now, softening your paint is a very, um, very good, um, what do you call that? Very, very good uh, skill to perfect, okay? So if you have time, just, you know, take a piece of paper or you can paint along and, you know, and do that, you know, but you wish or, you know, try, try to do that now. Um, I don't know why I did that. You know, you see me make a mistake right away, but you know, since it is, um, uh, you know, because I'm kind of skillful, so I can keep on with my mistake. This is still wet, I shouldn't have put the green there. So now, you know, if you were following me, go somewhere else, okay? Just leave that alone. Don't um, don't uh, pick on the green color uh, for a while. Just let, uh, leave that alone, so give this a chance to dry, okay? Now this is dry to me, and if yours is dry too, then come back with the sap green, okay? And please, um, you know, excuse, sometimes I make this mistake because um, Utah is very, very dry. And uh, even though we have a very, very intense, uh, you know, rainy spring to the point of everybody's worrying about if people, if houses are going to get flooded. Now that's uh, pure, uh, uh, strict pigment, okay? Not, I didn't wet the paper first. And then uh, I'm going to come down here and do the green, okay? And then have it, they need to go in here, right? And then we'll do the detail in a while, okay? Now clean the brush out, clean your nice brush and soften this area. Soften it, you can bring it into here, you can touch it while it's dry, okay? You don't have to worry about it a little bit too much, okay? Now, and now we'll just let that area go. We're just gonna let that area go. And so what we're gonna do, like um, I, I wanted to do the body part, um, you know, just have it all green, okay? This is the only color that she's gonna get fantasy over here, but she's gonna get um, uh, purple, with uh, with paint, uh, uh, dioxazine purple with pink gray down here too. So let's just jump in, okay? I think for me, you know, you you you, you if it were you, you touch your color and see if they are dry, okay? Because mine is dry, and you know, I know you guys are saying, "Oh, Kathy, you know, stop talking about you in a hurry, okay?" <laughs> okay, okay, you know. I, you know, but I always tell you, right, leave the hurrying to me. You guys don't worry about it, okay? Because, uh, you know, I always say it's the gigabyte, you know, it's the gigabyte's fault. You know, when you use, uh, when you use, uh, when you use, uh, you know, more, more pigment, you just see that I, I just went and got more pigment. Okay, don't worry about this is awkwardly, you know, the two plays, you know, but do your best, you know, butt it against it, okay? You know, the reason why um, I, you know, when we film, you know, good definition, good lighting takes gigabyte, right? And so, uh, don't worry about it. Just let me worry about it. You guys take your time. I always say that and I, was, I always repeat that, okay? If I'm going fast, you know, don't worry about it. You go slow, okay? Slower. You know, there's no reason, really, there's no reason absolutely to go too fast. Now I clean the brush again, okay? And then I'm softening that because the sunlight, right? So light here and light there. I'm going to just leave that, you know, and see if I can just let that for kind of like a sparkle from the sun. Okay, now when you um, put this two together, just kind of soften it, okay? Don't have to worry about softening it too much and worry about much, okay? So we're just going to leave her there for a minute. And now I'm going to go to my uh, trusty brush, okay? And it's a trusty little happy... No, this is not happy dot. This is zero, okay? So you know that this is very, very small. And I'm going to go into my quinacridone. No, sorry, dioxazine purple. And just pick up a little bit, okay? Whatever I have laying down on the side, you know, so it's quite intense of a pigment on my brush right now, okay? And then I'm going to go in and just uh, do the feather. I'm going to slightly suggesting feather now, okay? Slightly suggesting that the shape of feather now, um, you know, and that's all I'm going to do because you know why. And then I'm going to come here and soften it so it's not so fine and harsh, the line. You know why? Because, Kathy, yours truly 
do not like to have um, a lot of um, busyness you know okay so that's what I do and so I'm gonna do that right now for that so that we give these guys a chance to dry okay I'm going in with my uh, clean brush and I'm picking up some um, picking up some uh, uh, actually sap green okay and just lay it down here yeah I'm going I'm going I'm doing a reverse C shape okay that's all I'm doing you know just putting some paint here and there you know just to suggest for you that you can see the feather right I clean the brush now and come and you know kind of smooth it out a little bit okay and then uh, we're going you know we're going to because the feather are you know important you know you need to have it wow well, somewhere it's wet over here just oh yeah there's a wet spot right there and then I'm going to just come down here and now this is a zero brush it's a very good tea towel brush but they really have a hard time picking up color you know so which is good too I, I, I kind of like that okay and so you're coming down here and that's that's about all I'm gonna do until later okay we will just assess it until a later time okay all I'm gonna do with her face because um, Kathy like yours truly like them and then like them to be I'm going to have a little bit of feathery touch over here okay okay and suddenly this part this area and this area separate that right isn't that nice okay and so that's how we do how I like to in encourage you to do things you know if every time you have a form and a shape and you uh, and you um, and you uh, um, and you, uh, you know, leave a white spot, then pretty soon it's just very, um, you have whites everywhere on your painting, right? Now I'm going into some of my uh, uh, perlene green, okay? And then I'm going to do a little bit of perlene green here. Why, why, is it, why is it I do that? Because perlene green is a little bit darker than the sap green, and so it further separates that, okay? It makes this area look kind of like a shape, a form, okay? Kind of roundish the head form of the bird okay and that's how we do that you know we make so that the head is not a flat piece of rectangle right the difference in the value of the of the paint make that look like you know it gives you the form okay and so I'm going to put a little bit of that uh, perlene green also over here and then what, what I'll do it um, you know this will just further enhance the her her little cute head I should have done this painting for Mother's Day, but you know, I just I just love little mother. You know why the inspiration for this, right? And then now I'm using a clean brush, you know, and just kind of soften this area, you know, so she's more, you know, you can have dark down here and lighter down here. It make her head look rounder, okay? And if you want to, we can also do, let, let's do a little bit over there. Cause you know, Kathy is an artist, I'm an artist and I absolutely love, um, Make sh making sure that the forms are, you know, there for us, right? Okay, so what I did is just I do some feathering stroke with the perlene green and then I come soften it, okay? Now, if I go too fast or you say, oh, what did she just do? Then just, just um, you know, stop and go back, okay? And that's so beautiful about um, videos, right? Now, I'm going to do here and there some, okay? Some feathery touch to suggest her feather, but I'm not going to do a lot, okay? Because, you know, I have explained over there, right? Just uh, don't want things to be just too busy. Okay, and uh, and uh, just have a little bit more of the green down here. And then come soften it. And that will portray the form of that, like, kind of like a tube of her body. But we don't have to do that a lot right now yet. Because the real time to do that is right here. Okay. I'm just giving it a chance to dry before I start on the pinks, gray, and purple part, okay? So just a little bit of feather suggestion, okay? Not a lot, okay? Don't have to do that here and there and people will know what you're doing, okay? Now, um, the reason why also I, I forgot to explain that I make this part a little bit darker is the same thing, right? I want the, I want her 
her tail to be pyramid like okay and so let's um let's do this part now right there okay so go go grab a bigger brush like your flow brush or the happy dot okay and so we're going to go into that that the with a clean brush go into the dioxin purple make sure that your brush is damp dry I don't have a a lot of water in it but you know and then so what i'm going to do is like you know just kind of one color but it's not one color okay uh, you see what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to start over. Let, let's start over here because the reason why is because this is a, uh, you know, the darker part, right? And so, you know, as you go with your brush, your um, your 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 pigment will lighten up as you go up, right? For sure. And so, you know, we leave the darkest part of the pigment in the bottom, and sometimes we can pull it out too if we need up here. Okay, so I'm doing some feather shape over here, okay? Just a C and a reverse C, the C that's facing this way, right? <clears throat> I love um, doing my video filming in the morning part or morning of the day, but my problem is when I do that, uh, my voice is not as clear. You know, I have already done like 15 minutes of exercise too, and I still felt like, okay, now, um, Clean brush, okay? Clean your brush, and uh, we're just softening and pulling the, the paint out, okay? Now, remember, purple stain, okay? So they, they will make a line. You see that line right there? Which uh, is fine, okay? Because we can use that line, so I'm not, like, freaking out. But purple stain, and they don't like to, you know, uh, well, you work fast, okay? So that's what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Now, before we go on to put more purple, I'm dipping it in paint gray and further darkening this area. Okay, so you can see that, right? This is my, uh, what I call the winning color combination. Uh, Daniel Smith Paints Gray and Dioxazine Purple from any brand, you know, is uh, also Paints Gray from most any brand is uh, mixed very well with the purple color, okay? And so, I'm, you know, you can see that there's, uh, there's gray and there's like uh, Dioxazine Purple. Now I clean my brush, I go get more Dioxazine Purple and I keep going. Okay, because, um, you know, um, while it's wet, you know, you kind of go back in here, you can see the variety of the color of watercolor is quite pretty. Okay, and then I'm going to give that area a little bit. Okay, and then I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the brush. Okay, again, and soften this. Come in here, soften the line, okay? Soften the line, soften the line. Okay, now, over here, okay, I'm just using water and it's quite a bit of just water and guess what I'm going to drop in? I'm going to drop in the, I'm going to drop in the burn umber. Now you, you, you can see that I'm doing it while it's wet, okay? Because you know why? Um, that's the nature of the bird. I, yeah, see, I'm charging in a very light charge of... Uh, uh, of um, dioxazine purple in that because that's what the now I'm going that's what the bird looks like and so I'm gonna keep it like that okay I'm coming in with pink gray just to dampen that this color you know of the purple because um, the bird seems to um, this bird seems to look like that okay but still darker here and lighter up there okay see I'm quite happy with that. Okay, there's a, a fat shape of the mummy's uh, bottom right here. So we have to just remember to leave this little triangle and go from here, okay? Go from here and you do the same thing. Uh, it's a little bit wet. I think I will not do anything just so that you guys can uh, have a, you know, have a chance to let that. And then what I'm going to do is uh, let that, let your color dry, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a little bit of gray, a uh, pink gray color. Now this is the shadow of her feather, okay? We need to, the shadow of her feather, even though it's whitish, okay? Now I'm going to come in and soften this right away, okay? Because that is kind of ugly, right? I'm just putting the pigment and soften that, okay? So. It gives you um, also the, you know, your eye a way to see that, oh, okay, this part is darker. So it makes her, her tummy here, if you can call it tummy, a little bit, um, a little bit more uh, fat. 
it's a round shape okay so I'm put a little bit more pink square here because I know that it needed that it make this part even more rounder it's like you're painting a circle but this circle is attached to the bird right okay and that's nice that's nice so I might just think that that's enough of a shadow okay now so I'm going to go back to my uh, zero brush and now I'm doing the the feathery part and so I'm going to go into the burnt sienna okay and because this is just very flat right and so I'm going to just put some feathery stroke over there, okay? Just give her a little bit of a... And then I'm going to do the green, the sap green. Uh, no, actually, I'm going to use the perline green for this, the feather that's over here a little bit, okay? Oh, not intense enough, okay? Put a little bit more of the... Okay, and so you are, you're using her feather, you know, the nature of the bird to help you to make the form of the bird. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is, but it sounds kind of complicated. The nature of the bird, that means her feather, and the form of the bird, that means she needs to be a little bit rounded, okay? And so I'm going to put in a little, little, little bit more pearling green right there, okay? Okay, wow, look, you know, suddenly this become a kind of like a fat part. <laughs> <laughs> She's not really that fat, but you can see that we've been 31 minutes. Okay, let me uh, give the give the phone. I'll be right back. Okay. okay, so you can see that you know she is almost done, and then we can you know do the do the green. But you know she's the star, right? And so, but in order to you know, I told you that I'm gonna put green over there, right? And so that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, I'm going to because that's the way she is, you know. And so I'm going to. Use a little bit of feathery touch, okay, with some sap green and just, you know, okay, just do that, okay, just a little bit because, like I say earlier, we want this to be, want her to be not so busy because she is, it's an action, she's actually nesting, okay, so I'm leaving that, you know, if you did leave it, then that's fine, if you don't, then don't worry about it, okay, as a highlight, okay, and so that's, uh, Oh, I think she's getting cute. Okay, let's do her back part. And so let's do use a smaller brush. Okay, not back part, to her back wings. Okay, the same way. Uh, we're dipping um, it into dioxazine purple. Okay, remember to leave this triangle shape right there. Okay, and then I'm going to come in and show you. This is all most in the shadow. So you can, you know, use your purple. Okay. And then, but this needs to be consistent with that, okay? So now a clean brush and bring those purple, pull those purple color out, okay? Clean the brush again for me because I have so much pigment over here. If you don't have a lot of pigment, don't worry, okay? And then while that is dead, then go to the burn sienna and then drop it over here. Because that is just the way she is, you know? And we want it to be true to her nature, you know, as much as we can. But as artists, we do change nature of things because um, to fit our need carefully, sparingly, right? Okay, now, so over here, I may as well do something, okay? That is just a light wash of burn, uh, a light wash of burn sienna right there, okay? Because that's just the way she is. She has this, uh, her hip over here that support her wing is quite burn sienna-ish. And I'm going to drop in a little bit of gray right here to suggest the shadow okay while wow, it's still a little bit wet just a little bit okay not a lot okay i think she's pretty much done oh no 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 let's do her feather over here okay now i'm going to use the paint gray paint gray with this uh semi i don't know maybe i'll come back with the feather i mean with the zero brush but as of right now i'm going to paint in some oh yeah i need my zero brush sorry <laughs> because that brush is just too uh you know, it's just to uh, make too big of a line, okay? So I put some pink gray and then I'm go I'm just drawing a feather. And you guys can just follow me, right? Follow me and see what I do and at the final painting, of course, okay? Because uh, there is some feather and we want to, you know, make sure that we have, you know, we portray some of it, you know, over here, okay? 
but you know we soften it so that it's not so glaring right because you, you you know you probably could hardly see and then the feather actually come down like this because that's just her okay like this line over here okay and line over here okay so you can use paint gray and do the line now but be sure you go in and soften it so it's not so sharp okay everything is kind of soft because it's a soft bird okay okay and then and that's good okay now let's uh, change to our and get going with our uh, I might not be able to do the whole thing but I'm gonna show you okay what I'm gonna do okay now so we're gonna have very very light uh, burnt sienna okay so you can just use a you know use a damp brush but not too wet okay so you dab it dry first and then you come in here you come in here and you know just uh, and then you go pick up some burnt sienna and then you drop the color while this is still wet okay you drop the color in here and meanwhile what we need to do is leave this area now the color can go slowly into this area but we want to leave that uh, soft because you know that's the nature of their nest oh I was just telling you okay so we keep drawing dropping burnt sienna in here okay and then we bring it down here don't worry about the branch over here. We will fix that as we get to that point, okay? Um, I saw, well, my next door neighbor had a lot of uh, hummingbird feeder, you know, those red feeder that they love, you know. I used to have one and then I decided to give it up. You know why? It's really funny because one time I just, I mean, th you know, that year that I started, I realized that now there's a lot of pigment, so we kind of disperse it, okay? Now this is a very loose, loose painting technique over here okay so meanwhile we keep wetting her nest and putting burnt sienna on it i think that <sighs> okay so i was uh, out there and i i always like just uh, stand there because i have a goalie be behind my house okay and so i just like usually i just stand there and look at the birds uh, chickadees are very good about coming up to you and say hi but i've never seen other birds that are you know, very, you know, uh, social. And so I ju I'm just like, you know, just watching the birds back there. And I thought I saw a very tiny bird nest. And I know that, I know that, I know um, uh, hummingbirds' nests are very, very small. So I was suspecting because my neighbor had all these, had all these uh, hummingbird feeder and, uh, uh, you know, to finish telling you, um, I don't like because I know they ferment, you know, because they're sugary and they ferment. <laughs> so I decide not to make my hummingbird drunk. And I had never put mine out and throw it out, I think, you know, and uh, my beet feeder. But anyway, I, I don't care what my neighbor does, you know. And so, and I think uh, one of the mom decided to make a nest. And so I was just uh, very, okay, now what I'm going to do is use a clean brush and go in and take some uh, burnt umber which is a darker brown and dip that in a, with a little bit of um, and uh, with a little bit of black okay so a very very black color you know and I'm just drawing it you know this part is part of her nest you know but I'm just like uh, wanted to just do that okay and then I come over here and soften that a little bit you know, because you don't have to worry too much about the nest. It's just going to be... But you have a band of um, of white over here, okay? Uh, probably not so much over there. I think it's because they, you know, they have this burnt sienna in their body. And so when they make their nest, just this band right here, okay? When they make their nest, they uh, actually puke some of them out, you know, if I might call that. But anyway, I couldn't see it. I thought I saw a nest. I couldn't see it. And I want this to be a little bit more burnt sienna right there, okay? So I'm just adding some, just feathering it, you know, just a little bit more intense. Okay, now, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to sepia, our beautiful sepia paint. Uh, this is Winston Newton. Um, and then I'm going to mix that with the green with a green color, just have a little bit of um, green in the sepia. And then I'm going to come in here and start making shapes, okay? Because like, it's kind of like a, I know that it's her nature, right? It's kind of, um, what is she doing? She is like um, making something that look like a, 
um, a patch, okay? And that's the way she built her nest, okay? Now I say, oh, that's uh, kind of like a throw up. Well, it is kind of her throw up, right? <laughs> you know, and so I put a little bit more sepia, you know, in here. Okay, while well, it's still wet, okay? You, you see what I'm doing? You know, you can see what I'm doing, right? And then I'm going to come over here and do that, okay? With the sepia that's left in my brush. Okay, you, you see my brush is like all feathering. But, you know, you guys, I, I like to show you that because um, I just wanted you to know that, you know, I'm, I'm doing something very abstract, right? My brush doesn't need to be um, very... I'm going to drop some of the green now over here, okay? My brush does not. Because what you need to just uh, to see the style of her, how she does her nest, okay? She does that. You know, that's just um, the way she does. It's like a cup, no, a leaf shape, almost like a leaf shape. That's what she does, but very irregular, right? So I'm like totally relaxed right now because I know that I can't make a mistake. Okay, and I wanted a little bit of uh, light, you know, no? you know sepia just over here and there okay because she's not when she make her nest she did the best that she can you know she is not we need to learn to appreciate the beauty of nature and of uh decay and the beauty of um you know things are not perfect you know as an artist that has been going for, on for almost 30 years i don't like things perfect i really don't because you know i'm not going to do leaf shape leaf shape leaf shape leaf shape right like that and uh so i'm just like uh, you know see i'm allowing uh mrs um hummingbird to have her you know to have her beauty of her decay you know kind of looking but her her nest definitely is not decay you know but it looks kind of like that so i'm just kind of making it dirty <laughs> And I love that. I love that. If you guys love that, I will do a decay uh, sunflower with you in the fall. You know, because it's just like so, you know, so you, you I'm dropping my sepia here and there, right? And so make this look kind of like a messy, but her birdcage certainly is messy, right? Because mommy bird had a very hard time going out to, you know, gather her material and she's like she only have her beaks you know to help her and so it's just fascinating i just love that you know i just love the the love and the you know you see that in the animal in mommy bear and so i don't like papa bear as much you know because i know what they did to the to mommy and baby right and that just really upset me and uh just that's just the way they are you know so I'm not as loving to the... I'd rather see a mommy bear, you know. <laughs> okay, not... I don't hate them, you know, because that's just the way they are, you know. But uh, uh, I just... Um, I love the mom, you know. Uh, you know, that's just the way I am, you know. But of course, you know, my husband loves her, her daughters, right? His daughters, you know. And uh, man, human, we're not like that. And uh, But man... You know, well, you guys probably don't like the way that I, you know, talk about the papa bear, huh? I just, uh, I just much rather see a mommy bear. And so I have, I'm having all these, you know, and so, um, you know, kind of garbage looking, <laughs> you know, um, you know, well, you know. And then I wanted to put a light hint of uh, burnt orange over here, okay? Light hint, you know, just so that this is not so white, so white over here. But you still need to give her, you know, room for her to sit down, right? Right here. And that's the way they do things. Now, I'm going back into the sepia, kind of puke green. And then I'm going to just kind of make marks over here, okay? Make marks over here, here and there. And then I'll come in and uh, soften the marks, okay? Isn't that fun? Now, um, so after I saw them, but I still want more sepia because it should be darker. It should be darker. So I'm dropping and dropping more sepia over here, okay? And uh, after I saw, of course, I, I really have respect. I, I do, that's just the way I am for um, animals, you know, so I leave her. One time I have a quail in my backyard and I really wanted the quail. Now I'm going in with some burnt umber, okay? Just, you know, to make this a little... But, you know, if I drop burnt umber there, I wanted to drop some over here, okay? Um, just to make the painting consistent. 
Okay, and so I uh, I wanted to adopt a quail because you know I saw a quail, but then I know that I I, I you know it's not good for them, right? So I just um, you know leave it alone, and then I went to went down to campus to BYU, and guess what? I was coming up from the parking, uh, the parking <coughs> dungeon. You know they have a underground parking, and uh, I saw. Uh, a swallow mommy and daddy. So I love swallow now because I know that daddy help, you know. And uh, they were freak out because my husband and I had to pass by their nest. They had their nest up on the on the cement, you know. And uh, but the swallow uh, nest looked just like the hummingbirds, but much bigger. Okay, hummingbird nest is just minute. So I take my binocular and I see it, but they're just minute, minute. So I don't know. I, I, I think there's a hummingbird, so that's why the inspiration for this, right? And so um, the swallow's nest is quite a bit bigger, you know, and it's about the same. So I just like kind of stood there for like five seconds. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys, you know, because I was respecting the, the privacy of the swallow. I know that they didn't want me there. And so uh, it freaked them out, right? And it, and it worries me that they have a heart attack because I'm there. You know, what if mom and dad had a heart attack? That would be awful. Okay, and so this is about, like, you know, what I'm going to do. So you guys see how awesome this is, right? And so now I'm going to do the branch, okay? The branch that's going up. And so what I'm going to do is use a sepia and just do this part first. And then I come back because this is wet, right? And so um, it's going to be a very, you know, lighter color branch, okay? But I can do branch really fast. You know, and so I'm going to just put in that first layer of color, okay? And then I do some over here. And then what I'm going to do is with a very clean brush and just uh, come, come and spread the color out, okay? The reason why I do this side darker is because I'm assuming the sun is still coming from that way, okay? And so this is not a detail. At least I don't want it to be a detail branch, okay? It just kind of disappear over here okay disperse it disperse it disperse it okay so it's lighter because or else it becomes just too busy everything is so busy you know i want you to be able to look at mommy right and so she's looking good don't you think she's looking happy okay i hope i didn't forget anything on her i think she is done and then uh, i'm going to you know because i know i don't have a lot of time left uh, to stay here with you guys you know so i'm gonna do some uh, uh, branch here okay so this branch go into the bird nest okay and that's how they do it and uh, so I was able to see the swallow and that was awesome <laughs> and so I went to help my daughter uh, at Houston right after I went to the library that was why I was at BYU I love going to the library to do things as you guys know that and I came back and I totally forget that the swallow uh, Ness was there, so I went again with my husband. No, 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 actually my husband left and got, went to his office. I was alone, and this time, uh, the mommy didn't freak out. I don't know why she didn't, but she didn't. And so I was, uh, I am going to use my zero, go back, and then what I'm going to do is just uh, make sure that where the, where the branch go into the, go into the nest was well defined, okay, over here so you can see it. So you can see that, okay? And then the branch come out here. It's nothing but, you know, just kind of brownish. You know, not too much color so we can. But in nature, they are all meshed together, right? And one of the reasons why they do that is camouflage, of course. And I'm going to use some of that pure uh, throw up green mixture and put that over here to line it. And then drop some onto the branch, okay? That throw up... Uh, <laughs> CPU plus screen, okay, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't call it throw up, but it's her spit. Uh, I don't know if that sound better, okay? Okay, so, and then, uh, okay, I have a line over here, I don't need that anymore. I change my composition as I go, you guys know that, okay? And uh, so, right now, let's do the leaf, okay? Let's um, pick out, uh, use that green, okay? Just so, uh, let's use that number two, so that the number two uh, you know synthetic brush okay so I'm going to use a, a green uh, with some okay and do the and do the with some sepia 
and just kind of use that and uh, okay and then I'm gonna do this green because this one is part of the support of the uh, her beautiful nest right and so it came over here okay so it's part of the of course and this one go behind so you can't see and I'm gonna do one right here and then I will do the leaves okay and then I, I always like to soften that a little bit. I don't like things to be too sharp looking. So I'm just using a clean brush and run it through the branch, okay? And just soften that a little bit. And then you can see that. Um, and so I, let's go to the happy dot because I haven't used the happy dot for a while. I don't know why. And then I'm going to go to, go into my, my green mix, right? You guys understand my green mix and you see that. And so I'm going to use some set green mix with perline, okay? and to do the leaves, okay? Now this leaf does not need to be perfect, okay? Oh, I can see that because there's yellow in that. Uh, it doesn't match very well, okay? So let's uh, put some of that yellowish kind of pukey green leaf over here, okay? <sighs> so sorry. <laughs> I'm just very, very focused on the... Okay, let's just use the perline and skip the... Or just use a little bit of sap green, okay? Not too much. Um, I'm just very focused and I, I should have a uh, thing of a better word to use, but um, now that I'm painting, I'm quite focused and it's kind of hard. And I'm picking up some yellowish green to mix with that perline green. And so what I'm doing now is like uh, painting the leaf. Painting the leaf that is uh, supporting the, the beautiful mom. Yeah, and so I can actually visit the swallow. She's still sitting. Um, I think today is Wednesday, and it was Monday that I went down, um, and she was still sitting on her on her bird, and it was really fun. And now I just put some sap green. Okay, now when I asked you guys last time, uh, if you guys would like to paint uh, leaves with me, only one of you respond and say yes. And so um, I'm going to keep asking, okay? And uh, if you guys, when I get a, a few more people, because, you know, if you guys just say, oh, just do a painting instead of just do the leaf, you know. But I, I have already told you, though, I really know the value of doing leaves, right? Of practicing leaf. And I already uh, went down on a, there's a little creek down at the university. And they have, you know, because it's, it looks like it's a wild area. See, I just love that. I don't know who the artist is. Um, he, you know, the botanist, he actually uh, make it look like everything is wild grown. No. So what I did, I need to explain. I use perlene green and then I use a, a yellowish green color and drop it on there. Okay, so it's more consistent with her. So it doesn't look too out of sync. Okay, and so um, they have a lot of uh, uh, plants down there that look like they don't, they belong together, but it's also, it's uh, orchestrated. Yeah by the botany department, okay? And so I'm going to go down and take pictures of all their, you know, or sketch over there. I don't sketch quite uh, as much now because the mosquito is everywhere, right? Okay, more perlene green, okay? Just to make that, because this is not really, you know I'm painting leaf, right? This is not really the, um, but you know, you need to paint it nice. Uh, I want to change the shape. <laughs> You just love uh, watching me change my mind, right? And, uh, you know, you, uh, you you still want to paint ni nice looking leaf, but you don't want to paint it in a way that you are uh, distracting from mommy bird, okay? And her nest. Ah, that is a good color, okay? Because I wanted her to, like, kind of look like she lived in the wild. You know, this is like a branch. She is not, like, you know, so like what I was mentioned to you earlier, right? When we paint nature, we really, I know that um, uh, a few, like 20, 30 years ago, the artists are very, especially women artists um, that uh, do birds, they, uh, from what I can see, they like everything to be kind of perfect, you know, but I, I'm not, you know, I like everything to be kind of chaotic and decay, right? No, not chaotic. Not too busy, but, you know, not too perfect. Let, let's just say it that way. And so that's my style. You know, and it's really fun, you know, to be able to paint things like that, right? And so I uh, I just do it that way. 
I don't like things to be too perfect, you know. And if I paint a leaf, I would like to have the leaf also have, uh, you know, holes in it. You know, like you, if you see the Lotus Garden, like when you go to like Yellowstone or, you know, in Asia, the Lotus Garden are anything but perfect, right? <sighs> you know, I'm staying here hot and I just felt like I would like to go sit by a Lotus Garden and paint water lily. <laughs> You know, but like, you know, um, so that's the way I'm used to things, you know, and so that's why these leaves are like that. Very fast, right? And now, don't let me intimidate you by the fastness, okay? Like I say, you know, explain, just go back and just, uh, or watch a, <laughs> watch a commercial, how's that? And, uh, and uh, just let, uh, just take your time and then, uh, you know, and take your time when you're doing things, okay? Now, so all of the leaves have two colors, perlene green and that uh, little, uh, well, actually it's green gold. It's green gold uh, with sepia, okay? And so now, I what I have, I'm done. I'm really actually done. I'm so glad that I can do that with you. And so what I'm going to do is, you see this pencil mark right here? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go take it out, right? This is a really good eraser, okay? I'll put the link for you, okay? I'll put the link for this eraser. Uh, and you can find that in my blog, Sunset Peony, that is uh, .com. There is a product link, and I'll put that there so you can find this eraser. I just go down to the university and buy it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a green, a little bit of a green background. And then when I do the introduction, you'll be able to see that, okay? And then I'm going to go in the nest and like area like this and like this, you know, right? Because I want the net to look like a, the nest to look like a bowl. And so this area need to be darker. And so that's what I'm going to do. But, um, and uh, I will just show you a little bit, you know, with that sepia color. Okay, so I'm going to just come down here. Okay, not enough sepia, too much of that green, okay? And just do that, okay? And, uh, you know, not make it too round because, you know, you know, you know, when she's doing her nest, there's like things like that kind of coming out, right? And then I'm going to soften it. Yeah, I felt like it is important to show you guys this, okay? You see that? Isn't that fun? And it's still not dark enough, so I drop some more sepia down here, okay? I just love this. I love doing uh, decay and rotten things, you know? And uh, I think her nest is very pretty, if I may say so. She is a very good, a good girl, okay? We'll just call her a very good girl, so we're very happy to paint her. And then I'll just drop some green in the bottom. Yeah, I mean in the back. Sorry, not the bottom, in the back. and. And so that's it. That's the that's our little hummingbird painting. Thank you for painting with me. And I will uh, see you guys. Uh, uh, subscribe to me. Drop me a line, okay? And be sure to do your practice, uh, even in the summer months, you know. And uh, and uh, and because you know we you know uh, you know if we don't drop doing what we're trying to learn to get better, then it uh, it is more beneficial to us, really, that way, okay? And then if you have any questions, just write me on YouTube, write me on my blog. Oh, I haven't, I actually haven't checked the comment on my blog. I need to go do that. And uh, we will uh, talk to you soon and more paintings are coming, okay? Bye-bye. Love you all.